living in South Florida, one of the best times of the year is the last Wednesday and Thursday of the month of July. That's lobster season. This one's good. This one's three feet down. Lobster season, mini season, comes around only two days out of the year. And that's just been a big thing for me and Brandon. What's the left? You know, ever since I was a little kid, everyone's just talking about mini season. We're always thinking about it. We're able to get six lobster per person. And you know, the whole summer we're scouting out spots and marking numbers to be able to go on that day and, and limit out. Where you want to be, more to the right? Yeah. As soon as midnight hit, we were on the boat and we were doing something called bully netting. It's a type of net that you use and it's set at a 90 degree angle and you will go out on the flats in shallow water at night and you know, you're spotlighting for lobster. What we're looking for is a green light that lobster's eyes shine. Like how a gator's light shines red and lobster's eyes shine green. And that's what we're looking for. Oh, right there. See him? Yep. Got him? What do you need me to do? Just stay right there. Okay. See? There he goes. He's coming towards you. He's right there. Walking towards you. Yes, sir. There we go, Shane. There we go. Honey on the biscuits. <laughs> Me and Shane, you know, we're great friends and teammates. When he's in the front of the boat and I'm steering and driving, he just has to give me a look or just say something or point his finger and I know what he's thinking. Communication is key and that's exactly what it's like because he's the one driving the boat. He doesn't see the lobster and I'm the one with the light. Right, 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 right. He's got to give me directions of which way to steer the boat. Where's he at? So we're able to drift right on, on that lobster so he's able to drop the net perfectly on that lobster. I think you got to have that type of partnership, just knowing each other and gelling like that. It's a big thing. He's good. Good. Yep. Coming out in the boat around midnight on the first night of lobster season, is, it's not just about the lobsters, it's about everything else. Spin around? Yeah. Where we were trying to get lobster was in some mangrove canals. Traveling through those at night, it, it's different. You see the sharks, you see the rays while you're shining the light. It's just a really cool connection with nature. You just hear the water hitting the side of the boat. And for me, that's just, that's peaceful for me. There we go. We're back, boys. We're back. You may eat. He's good. He's good. Honey on the biscuits. Honey on the biscuits. Honey on the biscuits. We got three. Sometimes the lobsters don't come out because of the moon phase or because of how the weather is. Boys, that is a close one. At the end of the night, we only were able to get four lobsters. Dude, he just made it. And I mean, some nights it's gonna be slow. You gotta keep on just saying, you know what? Let's keep going, let's keep going. You know, next morning it will be better. <laughs> it's not about that, you know? It's, it's more about being out on the water uh, with my friend. I feel blessed because, you know, everywhere else in the nation, it's not really like South Florida. We need one a little bit bigger than that. South Florida is, you know, a subtropical region and it's just a, a paradise every day waking up to the ocean, the ocean breeze. And I've been very fortunate to be born down here and grow up. It's always just a bonding experience to be out there on the water. And <laughs> it's just the fun times. Just being out there, I just love it. I'll do it every day if I could, for the rest of my life. I headed to the stadium to play Kansas State. It was a long ride, and just looking, you know, left to right of the windows, you know, you just seeing big fields, the air just feels different. It's definitely not Miami. It's definitely not South Florida at all. You come out of a Boston College game where you're very excited about the amount of yards you have on offense. You go on the road in the ACC, you come back with a victory, and then you pick up your paperwork and you start preparing for Kansas State and you go, 
from the frying pan to the fire. The thing that I don't think people realize about this team and this stadium is they have won over 80% of their ball games right here. Going into Kansas State, you know, we knew they were a tough team and we knew that our camaraderie and our, our partnership together were going to be tested that game. Then I hear, hey, Mike's this guy, Mike's this guy. Now I'm running a double like this too right here. So you're good. All right. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay. oh, Going into the game, you know, we were confident and ready to go. And then didn't go how we planned it. Flying to the air, looking, throwing a slam, and it's caught. Moving left to rank to 30, down to the 25-yard line. Klein looks right, going to be a quarterback draw. To the 20, to the 15, Klein angles right to the 10. You can see why this kid is on everybody's list to win the Heisman Trophy. Option, right side, still has it. Turns the corner, lunges into the end zone for a Kansas State touchdown. I was picking the guys up because on the defense, you know, we feed off each other. We know they're running. We know they're running. Well, I'm down, you know, probably some defensive players are down. You know, if they're up, you know, I'm probably less. So we all feed off each other. Morris on the shotgun snap, looks, throws. Duke Johnson oh. has it and dropped it. Morris going to run, puts the brakes on and drill, throws incomplete. Kendall Tompkins could not get away. When we come to the sidelines, when we get off the field, you know, we're talking about what we just saw out there and what we need to do better. When things aren't going your way, you gotta be committed to what you're trying to accomplish. And to accomplish that, you can't be going crazy and getting each other's faces. You gotta be committed to your teammates. Either two things can happen, you know. I mean, it can drive us apart or we can band together and really attack this season. I mean, we have a long season ahead. And I think a lot of the guys understand that. And that will be the ball game. Miami is now one and one. There's going to be good times in a partnership and there's going to be bad times in a partnership and you just got to know that after a bad loss, the next day the sun comes up so you just got to keep going and partnerships definitely help that out because you need someone there. We're just going to pick each other up and keep going. Although you may not achieve what you wanted to achieve, it's all of our responsibility, the collective team, to reinvest, you know, to get back up off off the ground and dust yourself off and trust each other, and trust the coaches and move forward. Listen, listen, we're leaving it right here. You're gonna leave it right here. We are going back to work tomorrow, all right? And we are getting ready to be the type of team that we wanna be. You can't just be proud of your unity. You can't be proud of your togetherness. You can't be proud of all that when everything's going well. You gotta go to the well right now and dig on it, use it. I told the team to leave the game in Kansas because I don't think that game is symbolic of the type of team that we are or is characteristic of, of who we want to become as a team. This is the challenge now to go reinvest in the next game and let go of the last one.